Hello everyone and welcome back to episode 5, I believe, of the Lights Out podcast and today we have a very special episode. It is the review of the Bahrain Grand Prix. So this was the first race of the season and it's given us a really big indication of how the season's going to go down and who will do well. So unfortunately for today, Frankie has had some technical difficulties and like so unlike the other episodes he won't be in this one however he'll be back in next week and yes yeah, so next week for our saudi arabian grand prix review he will be back and it will be both of us doing the podcast as it usually is and as it has been for the weeks before so once again and po- apologies for that there's not really much we can do now because we want to get this out to you before like next weekend starts so we needed to record it now and to do and be to be able to do that it meant we had to do it without frankie so it's unfortunate but it's the only way we could get the podcast to you so i'm going to start by talking about the back of the grid and i'm going to work my way up in this podcast so i'm going to start with mclaren now for those of you who have listened to the other podcast before you'll know that mclaren have really been they were frankie's pick for one of the teams to do really well this season and they were also look really promising during Barcelona testing however moving into Bahrain testing they obviously didn't look as good because of their braking issues and they appear to have continued the Bahrain testing form into the race weekend finishing I think P18 no P17 and P13 or something like that really under average performance from McLaren and it's really saddening especially for Frankie, who's a massive McLaren fan, to see them. They've been steps of progress so much for the last four years, and now they've just like gone straight back to the back of the grid. And I, I don't want them to be replacing Haas, but like, well, I don't think they will replace Haas as like three seconds behind, but I can't see this being a good season for McLaren unless they can turn this round. It seems to me to be like a much more extreme Mercedes so it's not good for McLaren. However, I think it is what it is really for McLaren. There's not really much they can do apart from solve the braking issue. And when that's solved, maybe they'll go back to being like a top four team, like back to where they were in Spain testing. But there's not really much more to say. If they can solve the braking issue, then maybe they'll come back. But is that just their car? And will they be like that for the whole year? Or... I don't know. I can't really give you much more information on that. So, and the next team is Aston Martin. So, again, ro- really rather disappointing for Aston Martin. Like, they were ho- probably hoping to step forward in the constructors to maybe even P5, I think, would be a respectable target for them. And they appear to have gone back to being either the second or third worst team on the grid. Now, obviously, this is just the first race and the cars will develop massively over the course of the season. And with the extra funding, I wouldn't put it past them to be one of the teams to recover quickly compared to the other teams. However, I really think they will be really disappointed with their performance here. However, Sebastian Vettel hasn't had a race yet. So maybe Vettel next week in Saudi Arabia, when he comes back, that could be a big improvement for him and Aston Martin. So the next team is Williams, and to be honest with Williams, it feels a lot like they've just stayed in the same position that they were last year. Like, like they've fin- started this season how they ended last season, really. It was like, they had a brilliant middle of the season last season. However, they tailed off towards the end, probably developing this car. However, it seems to me like they finished the last season how they started this season. And they are, again, probably the second or third worst team on the grid. But they can't be too disappointed. Like, obviously, they would have liked to have done what Haas have done and jumped straight back up. However, they won't be as disappointed as teams like Aston Martin and McLaren will be. And also, Alex Albon seems to perform very well in his first race by outqualifying Nicholas Latifi by six places, I think. So he'll be really happy with that. And then Williams will be happy with him too. Because, like... Obviously, I don't think Albon's as good as George Russell, but I think he's probably as good a replacement as they probably could have got. And I think they did made a wise decision with bringing Alex Albon back in. So now the next team I'm probably going to talk about is Alfa Romeo, who seem like they've made a big step forward, especially with Valtteri Bottas. Now, he had an awful race start, 
but he fixed it and he got back to where he was at the end of the race and he was actually overtaking. So whether it was like he just didn't like overtaking the Mercedes or whether these new regulations he finds overtaking much easier, probably the latter, I don't know, but that seems to be what it is. And then, so for Alfa Romeo, they seem to have taken, as I said, a big step forward. Uh, not so much with Guan Yu Zhou, they seem to be in a similar position. So whether that's Bottas is just so much better or Guan Yu Zhou is a bit worse, uh, they see, they'll be probably quite happy with it and they seem to be heading in the right direction, like another team I'm about to mention, which is Haas. Now, Haas have probably, except maybe Ferrari, taken the biggest step forward out of any team. I'm so happy for Haas. They're such a likeable team, especially with how bad it's gone for them recently. And I think that they've done absolutely smashed the regulations for what they have were hoping for. Now, I, will they be able to sustain it or will they tail off with the lack of funding? Like, I hope they can continue with the, like, continuing to develop the car well. However, I can't be certain of it, but I really hope they do for their sake. Because I like Haas in the midfield. Like, I don't think they're a team which should be at the front of F1. That's not what they seem to me, especially with them being American. But because, like, Americans, I don't, I, I, I don't think F1's really an American sport, so it should stay really in Europe for the dominating teams. But, like, I think the American teams should be represented well, like, and not be just a team which is looming around at the back of the grid. So I think Frankie would agree with this one in saying that Haas, we really hope they stay where they are and at the front of the midfield or even in the middle of the midfield doing really well. And I also think Kevin Magnussen did absolutely amazing. Like I thought he would fall back when he made those lockups and stuff, but he didn't. He recovered and he got back to probably the best position he could have finished because I doubt he could have beat the other three top teams. So really impressive for Haas there. And I think they've really done well with the regulations and I hope they stay there so also with Haas Mick Schumacher really gutted him that he didn't get his first points however they're definitely coming this year he sh I think he will probably get at least 20 points this year that's quite bold however uh, Kevin Magnussen's already got 10 I believe so it shouldn't be too hard for him but I really do hope Mick Schumacher gets points, and Haas are currently third in the Constructors' Championship, which is incredible, really. I really do think this is going to be a good season for Haas, and I really do hope they can sustain it and stay there. So, the next two teams I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about them together, really, because there's not, apart from one of these teams, but there's, like, they seem to have not really taken a massive step forwards or backwards, and that's Alpine and Alpha Tari, who seem to have finished last season... And then they've moved back into the exact same position in the next season. So, again, battling for fifth, maybe in the Constructors' Championship, fourth or fifth. And then, depending on how well McLaren do. So, they're staying in that battle, which is where they were before. Again, similar positions to where they were before. Yuki had a very poor qualifying. However, I believe he did well in the race, which is good for him. Again, Similar sort of story for Ocon, and but then Alonso had a good quality and not great race. And then I'll talk about Pierre Gasly later when I start talking about the Red Bull cars. But I do think that they they won't be thrilled with the regulations, and they but they won't changes, but they won't be like annoyed about them. So I think they'll be pretty just fine with how it went. And they won't mind it too much either way because it really wasn't that bad for them. But then it also wasn't great for them either because they, they're in the same position that they were. So L plan doesn't seem to be going too great, but it hasn't completely fallen apart yet. Uh, I think Alonso will be disappointed with the race. I don't think he enjoyed it. However, Ocon will be happy and so will Yuki Tsunoda. So the next car I'm going to talk about is, so there's only three of them left and they're probably the big three. Uh not sure which one I should talk about next, actually, because there's so much I could say about all of them. However, I think the one which I'm going to talk about less, I think there's least amount of storyline to, is actually the team who got a 1-2, and that's Ferrari. So, I think Ferrari have absolutely nailed these regulations. Like, in my predictions, they were my predictions to be world champions, and so far they seem to be sustaining this really good run of performances. Well, one performance, but they seem to be sustaining the fact that they are doing 
incredibly well, sustaining, they are doing incredibly well, which I'm very happy about because I think Ferrari sh is a team that should be at the front of the grid. And I'm also happy for Matteo Binotto because he did ask to take control of the team and he really wanted to. And I'm glad to him that it's worked at these new regulations and he has brought the team back to where it should be at the front of the grid. Now, great race for Charles Leclerc, obviously. Carlos Sainz didn't seem too happy about his performance, so maybe next week at a circuit he might prefer at Saudi Arabia, then I think it's possible that we'll see a closer battle between the two Ferraris. However, Ferrari can't complain with anything, really. A 1-2, yes, it probably should have been a 1-3, but you never know. Leclerc had a great battle with Verstappen, which he did win, and the car did seem faster than the Red Bull over the course of the whole race, whether that's due to Red Bull's engine not being at the top, but the Ferrari did seem very quick, and I, I'm really think the Ferrari have absolutely nailed this regulation. Um, will they stay at the top of the grid for what I've seen? Well, I've, I've got no reason to see why they don't. Obviously, they've got clever people, and they are really well funded, so... Like, despite the cost cap, I do think they will stay at the top or near the top. Like, definitely top three throughout the whole season and going into the next future seasons. But they'll be really happy with what they did at Bahrain. Leclerc will be happy. Science will be happy-ish. The, the whole team will be happy. Like, it really was a good race for Ferrari and they will be happy about it. So, next team I'm going to talk about is the Mercedes. So the Mercedes for me is now probably one of my favourites to win the title. Like I mean that's really early to say that especially giving their first performance. However I do think Mercedes are now favourites to win the constructors after what has happened because despite the fact that their car clearly isn't the fastest right now, in fact compared to the Ferrari and Red Bull it is quite slow. I do think once they sort out the porpoising issues, they will be the top car left on the grid. So let's talk about their race. So the F Mercedes race was pretty stable. Russell recovered to where he should have been and Hamilton was where he should have been as well, really. He had a good start, but obviously Perez would overtake him again in the quicker car. But then towards the end, they also went on to the Haas, which was a mistake, but they had to experiment and it didn't negatively impact them at all, really. Like it didn't mess mess up the race and they were still in the same position as they probably would have been if they even went onto the mediums or softs again so it was fine for them and it seemed to be that but i do think that the team will recover and move back towards the top of the things later down the line however still on the topic of that race which i've completely jumped from there i am sorry uh i do think that the mercedes uh no, that's not what I was supposed to be saying. Sorry, let's just start again. I do think that they'll be extremely grateful for the Red Bull DNFs. And I think that is probably, despite the fact it's so early, the thing which has kept them in the season. Like, I mean, now they've got 27 worth of points ahead of Red Bull. And Hamilton's now further ahead of Max Verstappen than he ever was at any point last season. So I do think that when Reb Mercedes have fixed their car, Red Bull now won't be too far ahead because of what's happened. And I do think it's also extra points on Ferrari as well. And they'll be so happy and so grateful for what's happened. And I think they summarised it really well. And I think it might have even been a YouTube community page where it's told about how old they looked in the laps up to 56 and then how young they felt up in 57. That was a really funny and it was really, I think do think, reflected their race really well. So on the topic of the Mercedes and how much I think it would take for them to improve... Like, if they knew how to, what 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 was causing their porpoising, I think it would probably take them maybe three or four weeks to fix it. However, they don't know that yet, so I'm probably going to stick, like, maybe eight races before they fully solve how to do it. So I do think there will be, like, let's take Lewis Hamilton. I think he'll be around... 40 points or maybe even 50 points behind Leclerc and Verstappen each, maybe. Maybe not Verstappen, maybe like 20 points behind Verstappen and 40 points behind Leclerc when the Mercedes is fixed. But by that time, I do think the Mercedes will be the fastest car and I think it will give him a good 15 or so races to recover. 
the points that he would have lost. So I do now think, despite the fact I'm still standing by my prediction of Charles Leclerc being world champion, I do think it will now be an extremely, extremely close, extremely close fight between Lewis Hamilton, Max Verstappen, and Charles Leclerc. All of them, I think it will now be a close fight, but I do still stand by my prediction of Charles Leclerc being world champion, which I said in the first podcast. So now, the final team to talk about is Red Bull and, and as addition to that, Pierre Gasly. Their car looked so quick in barring testing and Friday practice. And then in quali, they didn't do as what they were hoping to, and but they still looked extremely quick in Bahrain, like the race. So... I think they do have the fastest package as of right now. And Max Verstappen would have been on for a good P2. Sergio Perez, P4, P3, probably P4. So they would be in a really close fight with Ferrari. And they obviously wouldn't be like 50 points behind Ferrari. And they also wouldn't be 27 points behind Mercedes. So it's really not great for Red Bull what happened. So it was their engines... Both of them had a similar engine-related issue. And Max Verstappen also had a steering issue during the race, which was likely due to a careless pit stop from Red Bull and how they dropped the car. So that one, I don't don't think it will happen again. But the fact that both the Red Bulls had some sort of issue with their car on that exact same race at a similar time, is this a like a long-term reliability concern for Red Bull? Like, will it be on every single one of the hot races towards the end of the race they'll their engines won't be able to hold it together like obviously you're allowed to change reliability differences for the engines however i do think that this will be a worry for red bull and could be what prevents them from winning the title now pierre gasly had another reliability issue this one wasn't related to the two red bulls whose issues were related his was related to an mg uk failure which they suspected which caused it to go up in flames, which is not which is different, but because it's still a Red Bull powertrain, it could just reflect the general unreliability of the new Red Bull car. And with it still, like, it is still developed by Honda, partly, but because with them moving now to being Red Bull powertrains, I, I, it doesn't seem to be as reliable as it was as the Honda engine. So I do think they'll struggle with that this year. However, uh, if it's just a one-off or they can control it, then I do think they are one of the fastest teams and a good team to look out for. And they'll be fairly happy with their Bahrain Grand Prix up to that point. So that's it for me rounding up what happened to all the teams. Like I said, it probably would have been longer if Frankie was here as we would have had two viewpoints instead of just the viewpoints of mine. But I'll finish by reacting to the predictions that me and Frankie made. And then I'll give us our predictions, which he's given me for Saudi Arabia. So, firstly, based off our predictions we made at the start of the year, I said Leclerc would be world champion, and Verstappen and Hamilton would be miles off the pace. So, technically, I've done pretty good with that, because Leclerc is winning, and Verstappen technically didn't get any points. Now, he wasn't miles off the pace, but come on, give me some credit. These are predictions. And I can't remember exactly what Frankie said, but I think he said Lando Norris would win a race because McLaren would be competitive. And he said... I don't know who he said, but he said someone will win, and if not Hamilton, so maybe that's possible. I can't remember who it was. It wasn't a Ferrari team. It might have even been Norris, but I don't think Frankie's predictions at the start of the year were great, to be honest. However, you never know. However, he did say that he thinks Hamilton would come very close to winning, and I completely ruled Hamilton out at the start of the year, so maybe he's done quite well with that one. And then... In last week, after Bahrain testing, we made mini predictions for just this race, where I said I think Verstappen would get pole and Sainz would win. So I was all right with that. I got the two top teams, and I said Sainz would win the race, and a Ferrari did win the race, and Sainz came P2. And Verstappen came close to winning pole, so I was all right with that one. Yeah, I can't remember what Frankie said in that. I've just tried to go through the other podcast and try and find where it was, but I can't seem to find where we said it. However, I can't remember what he said. However, I don't think it was a Ferrari driver. I think he may have said Max Verstappen, but I don't know. I can't be too sure, and I can't remember that completely. However, I he wasn't too far off. He didn't say a Ferrari driver, though, like me. So I think I've just actually had a really good idea through 
just now. So say in the comments whether you think you like it, if you've actually got this far. So me and Frankie can score against each other and who got the better predictions for... Like, we can do it in the podcast before the next race and whoever gets the best predictions for that individual race gets a point and then at the end of the season and our review of Saudi Arabia we'll see who has most points so after what's happened I think I'm going to give myself the point for this one so that's one nil to me after just Bahrain so now finally the final thing we're going to do is say our predictions for who we think is going to do well at Saudi Arabia so I think on poll it will be Carlos no, not Carlos Sainz, sorry. I think on pole, it will be Charles Leclerc again, who will get the second pole position in a row. Um, Frankie thinks that the pole position will go to Max Verstappen. He's told me this before on text, because obviously he couldn't be here today. So he thinks the pole position will go to Max Verstappen. And for the actual race, I think the podium will be Sainz, Leclerc and Verstappen. But in what order? I'm going to say it's going to be Verstappen P3, Carlos Sainz P2 and Charles Leclerc P1. And Frankie thinks the podium order will be Charles Leclerc P3, Carlos Sainz P2 and Max Verstappen P1 is what he thinks his prediction will be for that one. So... So that's it for the podcast today. There won't be any more until next week when hopefully Frankie will be joining us. Check out all our other videos. They're released. There's new videos every day, which are shorts and stuff. And then there's proper videos every other day, basically. So Frankie will be back next week. Thank you so much for listening and goodbye.